Hi, I'm Mike Piatekermaz, and today we're in the home lab again, and I'm going to uh, do a follow-up on TrueNAS. Now, many of you well know that I had not had good luck with uh, TrueNAS, or at the time it was called FreeNAS previously. Uh, I'll link a video up above here that I, where I talked about all the issues that I was having with it, and how I was just, it was not behaving well. And a lot of that was due to uh, a, a misguidance in their documentation. Originally they had suggested, uh, the documentation had suggested installing FreeNAS, the OS, on a flash drive and then just having the storage run uh, based it, and have it, the, all your disks run uh, for actual storage. And in the end, this was really not a great idea because the the flash drives, as they sell them today, just are not reliable enough to run a full OS off of. Even after doing a mirror of the boot partition and using high quality SanDisk, uh, like their top end flash drives, I was still having issues with it on this on this machine. So it, that was a few years ago, and I finally got to a point where I decided, you know what, I really need to try this again. Um, I had done some more research on it, and it really seemed to think that, uh, or really seemed to think that, that having the boot drive on Flash Media just wasn't the way to go. So this time, I using the same box, it's an R710, um, but instead, I, I, it, there was a slot for a CD drive internally and I purchased an adapter instead to have that as an, an extra uh, two and a half inch uh, drop hard drive uh, as a boot disk. And so for that I ended up using a 512 gigabyte uh, SanDisk SSD. Or not SanDisk, sorry, Samsung SSD. Um, and ever since I did that, and this has been about eight months ago, uh, I, it hasn't given me any problems. Um, and so I I, I'm, I, I, wanted, I, I was cautious about it, but, but, and I'm not completely still sold on the operating system. Uh, there are still some improvements that need to be made, um, but I'm having a much better experience with it now than I was earlier. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit more about some of the things that I've had issues with. Um, one is their iSCSI. They have a real nice wizard to actually help you through the uh, configuration of iSCSI on TrueNAS. Um, but it's, it, in my experience, it didn't work as well as, as, uh, as I, I thought it should. Um, and there were definite things that I, when walking through the wizard and, and doing the configuration, it just it wasn't working correctly. Um, and so that was one of the, the biggest problems I ran into on the way. Um, and, and in the end, I ended up just manually configuring iSCSI, and that works much better. Now, there is still one area of configuration that I wasn't able to get working right, and that was the, the CHAP authentication. Um, and so with, since this is in a home lab, I, I decided, you know what, it, it, that's something that I could consider maybe optional um, and instead uh, use uh, IP-based authentication and just lock it down that way. It's still not ideal. I'd like to get the CHAP authentication working, um, but for the time being I've just been uh, using a, the, the IP-based. Um, other than that, I haven't been running into so many issues with it. Um, the interface of TrueNAS, uh, the latest release, is much cleaner than the previous version of FreeNAS. Um, it's uh, before they seem to have uh, two different ways to get into um, different uh, the same interface. Um, they had the top navigation, the side navigation, and this time they've done away with most of the top navigation and just left it on the side. And it's much cleaner, uh, much more straightforward to actually do the configuration. Um, and so those are all things that I really like about it. Now let's talk a little bit about how I have this set up or what I'm using it for. So this here, is, I'm, I'm using it with SSDs only. Uh, and the reason for that is because I wanted something that it was would give me really fast virtual machine storage. I'm mounting it on a VMware ESXi uh, machine and I wanted to have fast storage. Now beforehand I was using this, uh, this Synology box for storage and this has multiple hard, uh, hard drives. I have eight six terabyte drives in here 
And I also have a, a, a read-write SSD cache uh, configured on here as well. But it still was leaving some performance on the table, I felt like. And so instead, I'm, I'm using this for storage uh, for my desktop machines and, and for, for a, a large storage pool otherwise. And thought, you know what, maybe TrueNAS would be a good way to go if I wanted to set up a smaller uh, storage array just for virtual machines. And so that's what I'm doing with it. Now I mentioned that I'm, it's all going to be SSD configuration and what I'm using here for the SSDs is the Samsung Evo line. Um, they have, I've had really good experiences uh, with their Evos in the, in the past in, in RAID configurations and, and I thought you know what this really is, is something that would give me the performance I needed um, with the reliability that I need because uh, one thing you want to watch when you're doing a solid state uh, on virtual machines is you want to make sure that you have enough rate endurance. Um, these drives here, I, they're two terabyte models and so they have a 1200 terabyte uh, write endurance on each one. Um, and since they're all sharing the load, that means that there's quite a bit, bit of uh, endurance there to go around. Now, um, the other thing that I'll mention is that I, I was trying to figure out what the best way would be to configure the storage. Um, with with TrueNAS, it's, uh, it's based on ZFS, of course, and there's, there's uh, a couple of options. I, I was trying to determine if I should go with the RAID Z or if I should go with uh, uh, mirrored VDEVs. Mirrored VDEVs. Uh, and I ended up going with the mirrored VDEVs because I wanted, I did, first of all, I didn't want the extra uh, rights for RAID 5 to actually, well, or RAID Z, um, to, it, that, that puts more load on the disks when writing because if you change any of the blocks and any of the stripes, it's going to have to rewrite uh, uh, that whole, or recalculate the whole parity for that stripe. Um, and so I decided that, you know what, since I'm going, uh, it would, I'm giving up uh, a, one extra drive, but in, in the end, I, I have just mirrored pairs, um, or, or striped mirrors, so to speak. Um, and so I have them in pairs of, of mirrored VDEVs, and then I have two of them right now. Um, in a future video, I'm going to go over actually switching because I'm going to add uh, a four more of them and, and go through that process as well. Um, and like I said, I've been using this for the last eight months or so, and it's actually worked pretty well. Um, storage is, it, performance was what I expected it to be. Um, the one area that, I, uh, uh, that I've switched gears on a little bit, um, a while back, uh, Tom from Lawrence Systems, uh, posted a video on uh, configuring TrueNAS with, or configuring your storage with either uh, iSCSI or NFS uh, for virtual machine storage. And, and he made a lot of great arguments for using NFS um, because it would be easier to do snapshots of individual virtual machines because TrueNAS can see uh, the file structure and so forth that's being worked with. Um, and I really like that idea, um, and for the mo and so I used NFS for for a good portion of time. Um, that was until I ended up starting up some uh, some uh, virtual machines for Mac OS, um, and so and this is the first time most of my virtual machines are running Linux or FreeBSD or, or some uh, distribution like that. Uh, but I hadn't done a whole lot of Mac, uh, virtualization of Mac OS. Um, that changed a, a while back, and the write performance with NFS was just miserable. And I ended up tracing it down to having asynchronous write disabled, which is the default. Um, usually you should have asynchronous write disabled because you want to make sure that what you're writing to the disk ends up on storage before uh, before it responds to let the the virtual machine know that hey you need that extra layer saying hey this has been written to the disk and don't continue doing other stuff until this the write has finished um, the problem with that is that VMware has additional layers of like determining okay I want to make sure things are written TrueNAS and ZFS have layers of I want to make sure this is written and apparently macOS has another layer there somewhere in between because 
while Linux was doing fine with the writes, it was giving me reasonable expectations for write speeds, Mac OS was just a factor of 10 slower. I was getting somewhere in the order of uh, 30 to 40 megabytes per second write speed. Um, and with four SSDs, that's obviously really low. Um, so I went the route of dis first I tried disabling asynchronous writes. And sure enough, when I did that, it would it the write speed in Mac OS increased dramatically. Uh, it went up, I think it was around 380 megabytes per second afterwards. The drawback to d disabling uh, or to enabling asynchronous writes, is that when you write, when ZFS writes the metadata of the disk, yeah, that's also done asynchronously. Um, and I felt like that was a bigger risk than what I originally wanted to take. So, so what did I do? I ended up switching to iSCSI again. And I, it was a little bit of a pain because I had to move all the virtual machines off the storage pool, um, create an iSCSI volume, and then move them all back on to that, to that new volume. Um, but ever since I've done that, the performance has been great uh, across macOS or Linux. Um, and in, and that's really in some, I would suggest that if you are doing virtualization um, and you really do want that extra bit of performance, if you don't need it, I guess NFS isn't a bad way to go. There are some benefits there. Um, but in, in my use case, it seemed like it was really worthwhile to instead uh, go the iSCSI route and performance has just been amazing since then. Now one uh, drawback to switching to iSCSI is the storage, the virtual machines seem to use more disk space when you make that move. And I believe this is due to the compression that, that ZFS uses. Uh, with, with a volume like uh, that is just sharing using NFS, it's compressing the blocks for the virtual machines and VMware sees that, sees the compressed size uh, and not the uncompressed size. After I moved those virtual machines to iSCSI, even though they were still thin provisioned, um, they were using about 30% more storage on, on the volume. And I believe that's due to uh, VMware not being able to, VMware is seeing then the uncompressed size. Um, and I believe now that even though iSCSI, the iSCSI volume is on the VDEV and, and it's still compression enabled and it might not be taking uh, as much, it, it's still taking the same amount of space on disk, VMware's not able to see that anymore because according to the amount of space on, on the iSCSI volume, uh, that's back to what it, the, the uncompressed size. Um, that was my best guess into why I was seeing 30% or so uh, increased storage across the virtual machines. Um, if I'm wrong on that, or if you have more insight on why exactly I was seeing that, um, leave that in the comments below because I'd love to learn more about that. Um, but otherwise, overall, it's been working really well. Um, again, I've been doing this for months now, and, and so I'm to the point where I'm, I'm really able uh, to trust it with my data. Um, and, and I'm glad that I actually gave it another, uh, another chance because it seems that um, May, I mean, while I recognize there's a lot of people out there that have had issues with TrueNAS and, and FreeNAS, um, and they really are making a, a lot of progress on that uh, OS distribution. And if you have it configured properly, I think, uh, or it configured reasonably, uh, it seems like you can get a really stable system out of it. So um, again, yeah, if you have any comments or, or, or questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. Uh, give the video a like if, if uh, you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.